Hello, this is part four of my video series about colors, which started as my submission to Handmade Network Learning Jam. And although the jam is over now, I thought it would be a good idea to complete the series with video about the HSL and HSV color models. So HSL and HSV are ways to build colors that are a bit more intuitive and easier to work with than directly adjusting the, the individual red, green, and blue components of your colors. But they are built uh, on an underlying RGB uh, color model. So these are not color spaces per se. Uh, they don't map cleanly into um, an absolute color space like the XYZ color space. Uh, instead, they depend on uh, whatever uh, RGB color model they are built upon. So the, um, the drawback with directly adjusting red, green, and blue components um, is that it makes it hard to reason about properties of colors we might be interested in. So for example, these properties can be the hue of the color or its brightness. And for example, if you want to adjust the brightness of a color but preserve its hue, uh, you would have to adjust the red, green, and blue components uh, together in an in intuitive way. And conversely, if you fix the green and blue components and you just move along the red axis, it would change the hue of the resulting color. So we want to have something that allows to work a bit more like a painter would uh, do when they mix paint on a canvas. And so to take an example of that, um, so let's have some background here to make sure we uh, can actually see all our colors. Uh, and now I want to start by mixing some of my primary colors. So let's say I want to mix some, uh, some green and some blue. And of course, the resulting color would be some kind of uh, cyan. And from there, um, I can mix that with white or, or uh, black. So for example, uh, so let me draw that three times. So for example, I can mix that with some black and I will reduce the opacity here uh, to blend these colors. I can also mix that color with white. or with some uh, gray color in between. And so this is what a painter would typically do and mixing that pure color with uh, white would be called a tint. Uh, mixing with black is called a shade and mixing with a blend of black and white is called a tone. So we can imagine we have a circle on a plane and we have our primary colors lying on that circle. So red, green, and blue. And in the middle, of course, we have um, our secondary colors. So red and green, I would have a yellow here. I have magenta for uh, red and blue. And for blue and green, I have my sign color. And I can also add the black color somewhere below that plane and the white color uh, somewhere above. And so I have a kind of axis of gray and I can build any color by uh, mixing a combination of, my, of colors uh, on my circle to some gray on this axis. So for example, if I can 
if I take this um, pure color and I mix that with some gray here, uh, I'm somewhere along that line. So let's see uh, something like this, and I can draw uh, I can draw that as a mixture of some red. And I will blend that with my yellow here. And I will blend that with some uh, light gray. And so that would be the resulting uh, color. So with that in mind, um, so this is the, the background, the kind of uh, motivation between um, uh, behind uh, HSV and HSL. And with that in mind, we'll see how we can transform our uh, RGB color model in something that looks more like this. So um, let's open a Python script. Uh, so HSL HSV dot pi. Um, and the first, uh, the first thing I want to do is to uh, draw my RGB color model. Um, so I will basically draw a cube with uh, each axis being be, being one component of my color. So let me import some things. So um, here I will create an RGB mesh grid. And each component will go from 0 to 1, uh, say 10 steps. And I want to have some uh, colors which uh, so each cube in between the point of my mesh grid will have a color so uh, i have to stack the r g and b values and uh, since there is like one less cube than there is uh, points on the mesh grid on each dimension um, i will stack r Minus one, minus one, minus one. Same thing for G and B. And these have to be, uh, this has to be a tuple. And I will stack them to have uh, like a cube of colors. And I can use the, um, the voxel function in Matplotlib to plot uh, this color cube. So I have to have some axis. Um, so I have to add a subplot to set the projection to uh, 3D. Um, and then I can print, I can display my voxels, RRGG, BB, and face colors um, will be the colors here. Uh, so let's do that. Um, so we have mi missing Greek part positional argument field. So let's see here um, this polymetric plot here and um, we have XYZ uh, field is the uh, yeah so you can define which voxels are filled or not which in our case uh, is all voxels so 
field will be equal to um, an array full of true value. And this array has to be the shape of, uh, of this guy here. Um, so only integer scalar arrays can be converted to scalar index uh, and people uh, yeah of course uh, I just want the shape of this thing And of course, I have to also plot my uh, to actually show my figure. So this is looking like uh, like a color cube, but there is some uh, lighting going on. So we want to deactivate that, and so we can pass uh, false to shade. And we have our uh, RGB color cube here. So this is the origin, uh, which is black, the red, uh, green, and blue uh, axis. And we have our mixes of colors. Um, so what we, we want to do is have something that looks more uh, like this. So the first uh, thing we can do is tilt that cube so that it um, that it is sitting on the black corner with the white corner just above it. So we will have to rotate that cube and um, so let's whiteboard that for a moment. We have um, Or cube like that, uh, or axis. Um, here, um, here we have our black point, or white point is here. Um, no, it is here. And we have a red point here. So I want to rotate the cube so that it looks more like this. Um. Uh, so minus a bad drawing, uh, it would look like this. There is uh, still the black uh, corner at the origin. I have my white corner sitting above it on the uh, vertical axis. And I have my red corner that is uh, sitting above the red axis. And to do that, I can first uh, rotate my cube along um, the red axis and then rotate it around the green axis. So the first rotation um, corresponds to that matrix. So the red, uh, the red axis, here is red, green and blue. The red axis uh, doesn't move. And then we have a 2D rotation matrix on the G, B plane, which is um, 
Okay, so Excalibur sometimes does that. I, I can just drag the thing but not draw, so I just have to restart it, which is the way of software. So, um, it's also struggling because of screen sharing. So, our matrix goes like this, uh, cos uh, theta, uh, this is uh, sin theta, minus sine and cos. And of course, in this case, theta equal pi over 4. So let's do that and um, see that it works. So I have my matrix uh, 1, which is uh, NP array. Um, 0, NP cos NP pi over 4, uh, minus sign this is zero this is the sign and this is cos and then I will uh, have um, let's say my transform um, component, so I will call them x uh, equal m1, 0, 1 times r plus of 0, 0, uh, 0, 1 times g and um, 0, 2 times b. I have same thing for um, y and z, except this time is 1 here, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. And I will plot x, y, and z. Uh, M0, yeah, this is called M1. Let's um, leave that as M because so for now our transform matrix is just the first rotation. So we have our cube, and that is um, distorted because PyPlot does um, uh, set the, the the aspect ratio of the axis based on the data you pass in. So you have to uh, set the aspect ratio uh, to equal. And here is for uh, tilted cube. So now we can do the, the rotation on this axis to bring that uh, white dot above the black dot. And so this one is M2. And this time I'm rotating around the green uh, axis, so the green doesn't change. And my rotation matrix is exploded here. And this time, theta um, is not pi over 4. Um, so I'm in this situation here 
where I've rotated my cube to look like that. Um, very bad drawing. And I want to rotate it around here. So if I look at the um, uh, RD plane and I'm looking down the, um, the green axis here, I'm seeing something like this here. And I want to rotate that so that I get something um, where this sits on top. Um, And, and this guy and this guy are aligned. Um, are on the same level. Something like that. So I want to rotate from that angle. Uh, so this is equal to this angle. And um, so my side here is the side of my cube, so it's equal to one. And um, this is actually the, the diagonal of the cube. So this is the diagonal uh, divided by two. So this is square root of two, the two. So we can see that, um, the tangent of that angle is equal to uh, square root of 2 over 2. So theta is equal to arc tangent of uh, square root of 2 over 2, which is uh, what Uh, so, 0, 06, 15, 48, so let's do that. So my second matrix, uh, I will put theta here. And I will move this um, up here. This one will be 0, 1, 0. And this guy will move here. And now we can multiply our two uh, matrices. And we are uh, multiplying from right to left. So this is M2, M1. So let's see. Here we have our cube uh, with the, the white corner sitting above the, the black corner. And so we have something that looks more like uh, what we wanted here. But we want all our um, primary and secondary colors to uh, be on the same uh, plane. So we have to kind of squash them onto the same, um, onto the same plane. And there are uh, two ways to do that. Um, this is where the HSL and HSV uh, color model differ. So in the case of the HS, uh, so I, I never remember which one is which, so I will just have to look it up in my notes here. So uh, for HSV, so the value is the maximum of, the, of all the components. And for HSL, the lightness is the, the mean of the 
minimum and maximum of the components. So let's re-encode our, um, our uh, uh, vertical axis as this um, value here. So I'm going to take, um, to say max equal NP maximum of red, NP maximum of green and blue. Uh, I will have my minimum here. So let's say I re-encode the uh, vertical axis to be just max. And so this squashes all the, the primary and secondary colors uh, on the same plane as the white corner. And so to, to understand why, um, we can just look at our cube one second. And we can see that if you're traveling uh, on that path, which is like blending between a primary color and a secondary color, you're always traveling on the rim of one of the um, bottom face. Uh, and so in this case, you always have one component that is equal to one and one component that is equal to zero. So the, the, HSL, uh, defin the HSV definition, uh, which takes the maximum, will uh, will send that path to one. And conversely, the HS, so let's say this is HSV. Uh, and now let's do the HSL thing, which is uh, the mean of max plus min. And so since we have, uh, on this path, we have one axis to one and one axis to zero, um, obviously the mean is uh, 0.5. So this sends the, um, this rim uh, to a plane that is halfway between uh, black and white. So that's why the, the HSV model is called a hex cone model and the HSL is a double hex cone because you have these, these uh, cones that are made of hexagons. So, um, so let's see. Uh, here, if we, if we look at it from above, or if we like project it uh, on a plane, uh, we can see that we have an hexagon, and we have, um, we have something that starts to look like what we want, where the angle kind of defines uh, the hue of the color and the distance from the center defines the chroma of the color, which is um, the, the, the amount of pure color um, versus the amount of gray or achroma, uh, achromatic color. And of course, our vertical axis uh, corresponds to the lightness or uh, the, um, the value. And it's always the axis of uh, black to white. So what we want to do is um, formalize that notion of hue and chroma and use that to map these hex cones uh, onto actual circular cones uh, and have um, a cylindrical uh, coordinate system, basically. So let's draw this um, here. So let's draw uh, the projections of the red, green, and blue axis uh, on the plane. And we have our hexagon, which is the projection of our uh, rim of fully saturated colors. like that. 
So here is R, here is G, here is B. And the origin is here. And so if I have a, um, a color whose coordinate R is something like uh, R, G, and B, uh, this color, um, I can draw the projection of this color on the hexagon uh, by following the R and then the G somewhere like here and the B and this would be uh, the projection of my color. So now I will define the chroma um, of this color as the ratio between uh, this distance and the distance to the, the, the outer um, hexagon. So if I have P prime here, the chroma is OP over OP prime. And this is equal uh, to the maximum component minus the minimum component. And so let's d derive that. Um, so we can, uh, since, since we are dealing with ratios, uh, we can uh, scale the figure however we want. It won't change those ratios. So we can make it so that the, project, the projection of our red, green, blue axis are one and thus the sides of the of the outer uh, hexagon are also one and so uh, op over um, so let's draw like the inner hexagon that passes through p and let's try to do this a bit better uh, so something like that Okay, so let's call this point um, Q and Q prime. And so um, these are similar triangles. So uh, OP over OP prime equal OQ uh, over OQ prime. Um, but I've just said that OQ prime is one, so this is actually OQ. Um, and now we can um, uh, extend this this line here, and let's call it uh, Q second. And so uh, OQ equal OQ second minus Q, Q second. Um, and you can see that OQ second is equal to uh, my R coordinates, which is my maximum, minus Q, Q prime which is of course equal to this guy, which is equal to B, which is my minimum. And uh, you can do the same kind of uh, reasoning to prove to 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 prove yourself that um, there uh, that this is true on all of the quadrants of this hexagon. So this is the the definition of our chroma. And now we will uh, define the hue as the, the distance uh, you have to travel around that hexagon, uh, starting from R to go to uh, P prime. So R P prime, so let's say uh, our hue is equal R P prime, which is equal to, uh, let's call this point 
uh, E, and so RP prime is equal to EP over or value C, which is like the scaling between the, the small hexagon and the big hexagon. Um, and so let me dr um, draw the hexagon that passes by the R coordinates here. So if I extend this side here and this side here, and I have, let's say, F and G, I can say that EP equal FP minus FE. Um, FP minus FE over C. And since these are uh, all um, uh, equilateral tri triangles, uh, this is um, FE equal EG. over C. And so we have FP, which is uh, equal to this side here, which is our G coordinates. Minus EG, which is of course equal to this guy, which is equal to B. So you can do the same uh, kind of uh, reasoning if uh, if you are in some other uh, quadrant, and you arrive to this definition of the hue. So we have G minus B over C if the maximum is R. If the maximum is uh, G, we would be uh, somewhere in these two quadrants. So this would be uh, B minus R over C. Uh, plus we would have to add the distance to get to these uh, quadrants. So that would be plus two. And if the maximum is B, uh, this would be R minus G over C plus 4. And actually, we want to, uh, to map that to, to an angle. So we'll just call that H prime and say that H equal h prime times phi over 3. And since uh, each time these go from minus 1 to 1, and we would want r to be 0 and have uh, or a hue go from 0 to 2 pi, we'll just mod 6 here. Uh, so that it wraps in the correct way. And so here is the uh, definition of our hue. So let's uh, let's code this. So we have our chroma here, and it's just our max minus or min, and we have our hue. And this will be like, a, uh, we will have to select which um, uh, which uh, computation we want depending on the which maximum we have. So this is a selection. Um, and so NumPy select 
Um, so there is condition list and a choice list. So the conditions are uh, m equal r, m equal g, m equal b. Um, and so if uh, if the max equal uh, well yeah no max here because m is my transform matrix. Um, so in the first case, we have g minus b over c. So g minus b over c. So let's say we call that h1. And we want to mod that with six h2 equal b minus r over c h3 equal r minus g over c uh, so i have to add an MP pool of two here, four here. Um, and so I will have H1, H2, H3, and multiply that by uh, pi over three. And I have to account for the fact that C can be zero. So if C equal zero, I'll just set the, the chroma to zero, the, the hue to zero. Uh, so that will be NP zeros. And it has the shape of H1. So we have our chroma and our Hue and we want to um, and we want to actually plot that. So my xx um, and yy uh, are now defined by polar coordinates. So um, x is c times cosine of h and y is c times sine of h so um, so now it maps the the hex cones to uh, real cones like circular uh, cones um, so we have that kind of color solid um, and the last transformation we want to do is um, we actually want a cylinder because the problem with the, this kind of solid is that uh, first, if you want to take a cut of that solid and you want to um, to set some points, there is like half half of the space that is kind of wasted where uh, it doesn't um, correspond to the valid color. Um, and from UI point of view, if you have like a maximum chroma color somewhere like that and you change its lightness or its value uh, it's not clear whether you want to keep the maximum chroma so move along that edge or change the um, the value but um, but change the, the the ratio of the color chroma compared to the maximum chroma so what we will do is uh, we'll normalize the chroma by the maximum chroma at that particular uh, l um, value or lightness. So in the case of the of the double cone, uh, we have to do that like like this. Uh, we have or a cut view of our color solid here. 
we have our lightness that goes from uh, 0 to 1, and this is 05. And the maximum chroma here is 0, here it is 1, and here it is 0 again. So if I'm moving uh, from here, if I have some point here, uh, my uh, the maximum chroma at that level is uh, one minus the absolute the absolute value of this distance. So um, max chroma equal um, one minus the absolute value on of this, and this is L minus uh, O five. Well, and this goes from this distance goes from zero to O five, so I have to multiply that um, by two. So let's code this. Um, so here we will define an other value, which is the saturation, which is the S in HSL and HSV. Um, well, let's see, max C equal uh, one minus NP, uh, apps minus two times MP apps of, um, so L is your Z coordinates here, minus 0, 05. Uh, so I have to broadcast that to the correct shape. So that would be MP for C shape one. Um, And S is just C divided by max C. And so now instead of uh, multiplying by C here, I will multiply by the saturation. And so let's see how, so I have to account for the fact that uh, I have some possible zero values. Uh, well, let's just say, let's just say we just add some uh, slight, some very small number here. So I have transformed my uh, my double cone into a cylinder, and so I don't really know what's going on here. Uh, there seems to be some kind of Z fighting thing because we are kind of transforming the voxel into in 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 weird ways. So. Doesn't seem like a uh, pipe plot keeps up very well with that. But yeah, this is definitely some kind of, of Z fighting. So I don't think our transform is wrong. Um, this might just be a bug in pipe plot. Um, so maybe we won't spend too too much time on this, but you get the idea. You have that uh, color solid now, which is the cylinder. Uh, when you move from uh, the bottom to the top, you go from black to white. When you are on the outer, um, uh, on the border of the cylinder, you have max uh, saturation, and the angle defines the hue of your color. So we can do the same 
for um, for HSV just to see uh, how it looks like. So here we have a different um, definition for um, for max C and max C uh, since it's uh, it's a single cone max C is just um, equal to or value so we have another kind of cylinder and here we can see the difference between HSL and HSV uh, which is uh, here you have all your um, uh, pure color on on the um, on the rim at the top of the cylinder, and white is actually only at the at the center of this top um, of this top disc. And you go from this to some uh, some black, um, which covers all the the whole disc at the bottom. And we also have some kind of Z fighting here, so I don't really know uh, why and how we could we could avoid it. But anyway, we have a beautiful color wheel here. So I think now is a good time to wrap it up. We saw how to build uh, the HSV and HSL color models uh, from an underlying RGB cube. Uh, and we saw how it allows you to choose colors in a way that is more intuitive than just um, manually adjusting red, green, and blue values. There's some uh, caveats, though. Uh, this space is not like perceptually informed. So, for example, uh, this blue here and this yellow here are considered the same value, uh, but obviously this doesn't uh, match our perception of brightness. Uh, the, the yellow here um, is perceived as uh, brighter than the, the blue. And the, the way the, the hues uh, blend into each other is also not really perceptually informed. We have this big part here that is um, in the greenish uh, colors and a very narrow band of yellow. And there are other uh, color spaces that are more uh, that match uh, or perceptions uh, more accurately, and where, for example, the, the distance inside the space between two colors matches or perception of the the, the distance between uh, the between the colors themselves. But generally, these spaces don't have nice shapes like that, like a cube or a cylinder. So. At the time where HSL and HSV were built, um, it wasn't like um, it, it was kind of expected that users would would still choose colors by moving sliders or entering numbers into boxes or maybe just having like a, a, a cut a plane of this cylinder, um, and so it wouldn't have been very practical to navigate more perceptual spaces where we have um, more complex uh, shapes that define the, the, the gamut of visible colors. But some people are arguing now that uh, since we have the means to explore 3D objects like this, um, we should uh, ditch uh, HSL and HSV color pickers uh, in favor of a more perceptually informed space where we could just um, navigate our way into the color space in 3D using visualizations like this. Uh, but either way, these are still um, nice, uh, simple color models to, to derive, and uh, it is pretty simple to build a UI for a color picker based on these models. So, yeah, maybe next video we'll do some kind of color picker things that we can add to the UI library of Orca. So until then, take care.